Okay, so tell us sure. about... Uh, okay, well, the Men in Black phenomenon. The Men in Black, yeah. Part of it is a psychological operations unit within Majestic. And uh, they operate to scare people away from things that they've seen that they don't want them, you know, further bringing information out in the population of the so-called giggle factor. Anything above that, they, they attempt or have attempted, I don't even know that they're still in operation, to suppress. Then you have the real McCoy. The real McCoy is not human. The real McCoy is in fact a P-45J rod. They are using, through the use of some sort of sinuous biomechanical technology, the skin of a dead human. Wow. It is a dead human. These are the ones that walk up to you and they look like they're shuffling, like they've just filled their drawers. Uh, when they speak through this technology that they have wrapping around them, they sound very bland, very monotone, and they don't belong. You can tell very quickly that they don't belong. Um, have you met one? I've met several of them. Uh, they were operating around um, my work at Sunchase before we were moved to a different location. Yes, they're very sallow in appearance. Um, they uh, thought that it was an appropriate expression to sing me happy birthday one year over at, uh, I think it was uh, the start of 2003. It was either 03 or 04. 03, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I did not like being around them, uh, and uh, they will not think twice but to use force on you. They will hit you. They will push you. One did me. Um, Marcia, uh, not uh, that long ago, got her fill of both types, both the psychological operations people who attempted uh, a few years ago to scare her off over at um, Winchester Park. These were, those were human beings, they were just striking fear in her. Uh, and one actual real McCoy, um, Mib. And um, this thing, I, I actually saw it first, it wandered onto, they get confused easily. That's a good thing. Uh, wandered onto our property uh, at uh, well, where we're presently living, and I was walking home from her apartment at the time, and I thought a child was swinging on the swing. There's a swing set out in front of my apartment. Um, the closer I got, I thought that it was a, a little older kid wearing black. Then I noticed it had a hat on. And he said, swing, fun. He was lost in a memory, apparently, of the person that he was wearing. And I looked at him and got very afraid inside because they carry weapons. They can be killed with weapons, too. He was not supposed to be on our property, our security did not do its real job. We're not worried about the two-legged real humans that just walk around. It's these things. Um, so he was the size of a child, is that uh, what you're saying? No, he was, uh, he, he, it, I thought it was a child on the swing set as I was walking up. It was getting, it was past dusk. It was dark out there. So and he was a normal size. He was a normal size. Man, yep. full grown person. Yep, yeah, he was wearing all black. Uh, and a black preacher's type uh, hat, round brimmed. How do you get rid hat. of him? Well, how do you get rid of yeah. him? Um, well, it would be very good if a, if, if a person could actually, well, I've got to be careful in suggesting that, because mm -hmm. they are still human beings. Mm -hmm. um, they took him into, security ultimately took him into custody. Just want to be careful, liability-wise, of, of making a suggestion on how to get rid of one of them. But um, um, 
people could miss Q and, right. and we wouldn't want to have a problem. And now say, well, you know, Dr. Burrish said uh, do this or that. Um, there shouldn't be that many walking around to worry about. But, uh, and, it, and it wasn't even sent there to deal with me. It was sent there to deal with her. And it found itself apparently lost in a memory um, in the swing set. And I said, good, swing to it. And inside I'm going, oh, shit. Walked in, keyed the door to my apartment, pressed the emergency button for security, hoping then that they were going to respond. Went in and told my, uh, my mother-in-law what was going on. She looked out of the window and said, yep. Yeah. She's been in the Majestic family all her life. She said, yeah. Then uh, the oldest got up, looked out the window, and said, that's what one looks like. It was her first experience seeing one. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, Doris, uh, go over here. And I unlocked something, and I pulled something out for her. And I said, while I leave here, because I'm going to do the hurt bird routine, lead it away, because, I mean, we three kids in there. I said, I don't know what its intention is. It may have a, a, um, a lethal intention here, and it's just presently lost. As soon as it gets done swinging, it may pull a weapon out. I said, so if it comes near here, defend yourself and defend the kids. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab something else. Yes, I grabbed a weapon, and I'm going to try to lead it away. By the time I had the second weapon out and was armed, it was walking off already toward her <laughs> apartment's direction. So I said, okay, well, I still have to get it in case it turns around, because if it knows where I went into the apartment, I have to lead it away because there are kids in here, there's little girls in here. Uh, and so I walked toward it, past it, <laughs> walked clear by it, and it just continued shuffling ahead slowly up the sidewalk, gradually toward her apartment. Got over to her apartment, I said, where in the hell is security? So we were pushing buttons over there, nobody's responding. Got on the radio, nobody responds. I said, you have a MIB walking toward your apartment right now. She said, a MIB, and I said, an ET. I said, they are dangerous, as you're well aware, but you know, it's her first experience with something like this. Um, I said, come here, look, it can't possibly, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't walking back toward my apartment where the girls were. I said, it can't possibly have reached here by now. <laughs> I mean, it's walking slowly. And uh, so she came out with me, and uh, she went over by the, uh, the wall behind a, a bush, and uh, she didn't see it initially. It was hidden like in the recesses of the light as it was walking up in one of the, um, the um, shadowed areas because now the lights had kicked on the exterior of the buildings and all of that. And I walked up onto the sidewalk and saw it and I turned my back on it at that point. They don't run. So I turned my back on it and I said, you may want to be going that way to Marcy. And she said, because uh, she's not the faint of heart, uh, female, she said, why? And then she saw it over my shoulder and got her first, laid her first eyes on an ET. And her eyes got about that big, which is the normal reaction. And she walked give you some credit, she actually walked from there back toward the corner of the building um, before I saw her break into something more than a walk. She walked away from it. By then, I'm still standing there and this thing walked by me. Now I'm wondering what, why it's here. And I said, hi. And it turned this close to me and said, hello continued to walk. Walked right past me like I wasn't even there. Toward her. I thought, well, okay. 
it has an assignment. We don't know what the assignment is because it will not give up its intention behaviorally before it carries out its assignment. And I wasn't sure if it was armed or what, so I walked by it again. This is how slow it is shuffling. It walks like it's got poops in it, poop in its pants. I mean, that's how you can, I mean, they are, they are clearly not comfortable in the skin. I walked by it again. Now I have made certain adjustments to the firearm I had on me because I was figuring that whatever was going to happen, it was going to happen fairly soon. And if it pulled a weapon out, I was going to do what I learned in the police department and do it well uh, for parole and probation. Got back to her, got all the way into her apartment, locked the door. I then said, I said, you go get your gun. If it pulls a weapon out, you've been a former cop too, do what you do and do it well. By that time, we were both shaking, figuring you know it was going to turn into something very bad. It sat down on the stairway outside of her apartment, and it had a bag with it. It was a black bag of some sort, and I didn't know what was in it. It could have been anything. And it just sat there. And then it got up, and it walked past her apartment. And now I'm looking at her like, what the heck? this. Still no security. Finally, after it, it had made its way all the way to the, the um, basketball court area and stood there and looked around, still confused, security came up with its weapons drawn and took it into custody. Put it in one of the vans and off it went. They cuffed it like a human being would be cuffed, and they took it. She got a couple photographs off. We actually, because it walked down toward the court, uh, I was looking through the window and said, well, there's no way it could hit us from here, even if it does have a gun on it or whatever. Um, she stepped out onto her porch, and she took a couple photographs. Uh, with a, it was a disposable. It was, I found a disposable camera. It was up on the bookshelf near the door, Order and I just disposables. grabbed it. And it was a. That's all I had. She she took a couple photographs of it, and we have since made those public on the Eagles Disobey forum. Those are real. It's the real shoot. McCoy. The best I could do. The enhancements that show one after another with it. You know, bringing it out from the background. Those are the best enhancements I could do because the original photographs that we put up there too, you saw, I mean, it was just basically jet black. Mm -hmm. There was no carrying of the flash, and it was not set for, uh, you know, night speed or anything like that. It was a, an indoor-outdoor type daytime camera, a disposable camera, but it was all that was available. Now, security took photographs and all of, and all of that, but they don't share them. Right. At the same time, I was doing my weekly reports, and I detailed it in my weekly report. And I allowed that weekly report to be made available, too, where I said, you know, the MIB was taken into custody and no one was injured. But, uh, yeah, he just walked onto her property. Assignment, still to this day, unknown. Hmm. Well, following 20 years of service for the Majestic, last October the 12th, which was October the 12th, 2005. I was dismissed at the time of their adjournment to complete a, um, a final set of orders, if you will, to present the information which uh, I had learned over the last 20 years concerning the extraterrestrial intelligences um, to the world or to whomever wanted to hear. Uh, for the last year's time, we have been um, uh, committed to a debriefing of um, my service since 1986. And even actually before that, uh, we've, we've ranged uh, to um, uh, speaking about my early life as well. Um, we're hoping that within a short period of time, DVDs will be completed and uh, this will be presented. And, this will then conclude my service to Majestic uh, with a very big relief and thank God. Um, 
Uh, right now, we are presently in the middle of several different projects, um, inclusive of which is um, Project Lotus, which has basically been dispatched and dismissed to me after uh, uh, the years of service as well. Um, this Meaning project, it was turned over to you? Well, it, it's been turned over. I, I don't think that, th that uh, the folks from the former Majestic are continuing to research at all. I, I, re I, I really don't think that they want anything to do with it after the um, problems that we've had and uh, associated problems at, at a couple different facilities um, involving, we'll say, extraneous energy emissions around the project. Um, which so, have caused some damage to their equipment. Um, well, to back up a tiny bit, could you tell us what is Project Lotus? Sure. Uh, in, in May of 2001, we traveled to Frenchman Mountain here in Nevada to begin a real project looking for a biomarker uh, for a possible uh, precursor virus. It was a rather prosaic uh, study looking for evidence for panspermia. Um, during the course of that initial investigation, we came across some anomalous activity uh, in some of our data sets. That anomalous activity was ultimately tracked down to um, very unusual electromagnetic activity associated with uh, silicon oxides. Um, and we have since tracked that anomalous activity to any silicon oxides uh, present in minerals. Uh, to wit, the, the, um, the activity is the presence of an emission of electromagnetic bundles containing information. Um, we are presently attempting to further define the nature of uh, that electromagnetic anomalous activity. But we have, in fact, determined that the activity is associated with um, cells within the terrestrial environment uh, and that they have effects upon cells in our terrestrial environment up to and including modifying the genetic material of extant cells in our environment. Are you saying uh, living cells? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, uh, together with these electromagnetic uh, emissions that we have defined with uh, um, relative precision to date to be specific varieties of what we termed as particles, we had to call them something, they're bundles of electromagnetic material, confined uh, discrete bundles that we believe are possibly related to uh, as far back as the ancient Pavitrakas of the Hindus, uh, subtle matter particles, which could be imparted into our environment and affect changes. Um, thus far, we have not uh, observed negative changes, uh, meaning the effects of these uh, um, subtle matter particles, if you will, have not affected um, uh, our environment negatively. But you have had interruptions as a result of those particles well, we've in had, anomalous activity, you said. We've had, we've had anomalous um, uh, thermal emissions when too much or too little um, energy was imparted to the um, uh, silicon oxide bearing material. Uh, we have had unusual drains of uh, um, batteries mm -hmm. around the activity. Uh, and have not defined why, but, but there have been two phenomena associated with uh, a lotus that have been particularly striking to me as a, as a biologist. We've had resets of cells which have occurred, and I say resets because I'm trying not to make it sound Frankenstein-like, um, where there have been heat-fixed uh, yeast cells which have been used as uh, um, offered, if you will, to this phenomenon as, as target cells. And upon the receipt of material of these dead heat-fixed uh, yeast cells, we've had a restart of, of the cells, uh, and we have the, the photographic and the... So they've the, come uh, back to life, is what you're saying, uh, as a result of this... There has been a... 
Yes. I really don't even like using those terms. It's it's out of the book, off the edge of the pizza, so to speak. Um, but we have had a restart of, of uh, the cells in that location. However, the cells which have restarted from the dead cells are not the same cells are not the same uh, function functioning cells as the the uh, precursor cells, the precursor yeast cells. We don't really know what uh, they are. You mean, are you saying that the cells changed and they're functioning differently after being exposed to this uh, yes. energy? Yes, uh, we started out uh, with a essentially a, uh, a fungal cell, a budding yeast cell, which we heat fixed. And the result was more uh, a term to um, what one would normally term an animal-like cell. Really? So it actually yes. changed it from one thing. It actually transformed it from one thing to another. It transformed it from one thing to another uh, after imparting to it what we've come to call a template. Um, there is, is an actual the... imparting of uh, DNA. Ah. to the cell. So we're receiving DNA essentially across some sort of a an electromagnetic barrier uh, through these these what we call portals, these emissions of um, electromagnetic uh, energy that that then impart further discrete bundles of electromagnetism to our environment. So is and we're attempting to understand it. We don't understand what we are truly looking at at the moment. We've not fully defined uh, the lotus is a system. Okay, but is this, are the, the particles, are these the Ganesh particles that are coming through? We've, de we've defined it three basic discrete varieties of particles uh, that we have turned, uh, termed um, alpha, uh, beta, and, uh, and C-type uh, particles. The A-type particles um, were nicknamed Ganesh particles, and that's what they are, they're nicknames. We had to call them something, so we called them Ganesh particles, uh, out of a, a historical uh, deference, if you will, for the, the mover, mover of obstacles. Um, and we called the, the, uh, the portals Shiva portals, as an opening or a changing. Uh, these are the, the uh, admission or uh, emission centers, if you will for these Ganesh particles. And then we have still another variety of um, um, particle, which we call selkies, and uh, Marcia actually named them. These are C-type uh, particles, and they basically act as um, almost like crossing guards, hmm. which line the, the periphery of a, an electromagnetic magnetic stream that leaves these portals and basically act as, as um, guards or guideways um, surrounding the Ganesh particles, giving them a pathway to a target. Now the real question I think is, is how is the decision being made for a target? And we, we've identified on, on these selkies what appear to be acoustic antennae. And I say appear to be acoustic antennae because changes of, of input into this system, acoustic changes, affect the behavior of these selkie particles. Sound, in other words, yes. sound is affecting the selkie particles Causing them to redirect uh, the energy towards a target or away from a target? Causing them to redirect their positions, which confine an electromagnetic stream or a river, if you will, being emitted from these portals. And, and you know, we've wondered what the portals are. They might be micro wormholes. Okay. We don't know uh, right now. For and, are, and these are nano sized portals? Is that uh, no, what these, are, these are microscopic okay. sized. Um, somewhere within the, the 20 to, um, uh, well, it'd be very transient, up to 50, but around the, the 10 to 20 micron size, micrometer size. And so they're observable quite readily under a compound microscope if the conditions are held constant and if um, um, 
they are treated delicately. They're extremely transient uh, phenomena. In other words, you don't have a control over them. No, no. And in fact, um, we don't do uh, any direct uh, propagations anymore. Uh, the last, the last uh, direct propagation was done last November, and we received it for the second time an anomalous growth of cells in the medium surrounding the crystal that we were using. We were using a quartz crystal uh, because of the, the, uh, the silicon oxide nature of the quartz crystal. Um, and we received a, a, an anomalous growth of cells of unknown origin around the crystal. So we do not know where these, these cells were from. Uh, we've had that happen now twice and uh, We've determined that we're we're getting a little too good, if you will, at the science of propagating these portals, and we're possibly receiving a negative consequence as a result. In other words, those could actually be um, an alien life form. Indeed. Okay. Indeed, they could. Very interesting. They could be extraterrestrial. Um, cells. The, the, I mean, the, they're the microscopic, the cells, right? So. Right. I mean, you know, we we we've, we've received a mix of. Very unusual cells, which we were not, I was not able to, to you know, cytologically type. Uh, and also cells which appeared nearly prosaic to uh, our ocean here. Um, microscopic one-celled uh, organisms, haptophytes. Um, but they that, came out of nowhere. Um, the material that we had provided um, to, the, to the experiment uh, prohibited a cross-contamination, the ability for this to have been a cross-contamination. So they they came from somewhere. They came from somewhere. Now, also, um, what we've done is um, a repeat of a, a very famous experiment called the Spallanzani experiment with beef broth, but we we put a, a tweak on it, if you will. Uh, and, in the Spallanzani experiments were experiments designed to either prove or disprove the idea of spontaneous generation. And so the question is then begged, are we exhibiting spontaneous generation here? And I, I think that we have uh, zero uh, evidence that this, is, that this is spontaneous generation. And allow me to explain why. The Spallanzani experiment that we repeated, we did it exactly the way the, the famous uh, experiment was originally done, with beef broth that had been boiled, but we actually had it autoclaved, uh, so that we had pressure and heat both acting on it, uh, getting rid of all the spore formers, everything that could have been present in there as a living um, um, organism. Uh, we left some open, some closed, and then we did a closed and an open experiment where we applied electricity and a silicon oxide bearing crystal to it. And in the case where we had the closed uh, study done, we received the growth of cells in that closed study, uh, which appeared to me uh, to be neural cells and organized neural cells uh, to the point where we could actually tell morphologically that there was an ABAB pattern which was developing. Um, I wouldn't say that I was in a panic, but uh, Marcia is nodding her head rapidly off the <laughs> camera. I was in a near panic to cease the study then and there so that we weren't accidentally producing something with sentience. Wow. Not my right, and that would have been a, um, an abomination of some variety. Uh, I don't practice um, the tools of science devoid of um, um, moral considerations. Some nowadays, I think, uh, have no problem, have no compunction against that, I do. Um, so the, the study was ceased immediately and the cells were photographed. Yes, we have the photographs of them, but uh, the study was ceased and um, 
it was it was killed immediately. Okay, well, this is this is really um, kind of earth shaking information that you've mm-hmm. got here, and mm-hmm. now very that I'm, I'm getting it for me. Uh, in a way that that I understand, it makes it very clear. Wow. But, um, uh, thank you, Dan. That was uh, quite quite enlightening. Uh,